Question 1. Who should obey diamond-shaped traffic signs? D. Tram drivers. These signs apply only to tram drivers, but you should know the meaning, so that you're aware of the priorities, and are able to anticipate the actions of the driver. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in the first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time. Let's get back to the video. Question 2. How much can stopping distances increase in icy conditions? Dot B. 10 times. Tire grip is greatly reduced in icy conditions. For this reason, you need to allow up to 10 times the stopping distance you would allow on dry roads. Question 3. What hazard should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? C. Pedestrians. Make sure that you've reduced your speed and are in the correct gear for the turn. Look into the road before you turn and always give way to any pedestrians who are crossing. Question 4. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? A. By displaying a stop sign. If a school crossing patrol steps out into the road with a stop sign, you must stop. Don't wave anyone across the road and don't get impatient or rev your engine. Question 5. You are traveling in very heavy rain. How is this likely to affect your overall stopping distance? A. It will be doubled. The road will be very wet, and spray from other vehicles will reduce your visibility. Tire grip will also be reduced, increasing your stopping distance. You should at least double your separation distance to make sure you can stop safely in the space you've allowed. Question 6. What's the meaning of this sign? D. Waiting restrictions. This sign indicates that there are waiting restrictions. It's normally accompanied by details of when the restrictions are in force. Details of most signs in common use are shown in the highway code. For more comprehensive coverage, see Know Your Traffic Signs. Question 7. You're driving at night and looking for somewhere to park. When may you park on the right-hand side of the road? When you're in a one-way street. Red rear reflectors show up when headlights shine on them. These are useful when you're parked at night, but they'll only reflect if you park in the same direction as the traffic flow. Normally you should park on the left, but in a one-way street you may also park on the right-hand side of the road. Question 8. You're approaching a busy junction. What should you do when, at the last moment, you realize you're in the wrong lane? A. 
continue in that lane. There are times when road markings are obscured by queuing traffic, or you're unsure which lane to use. If, at the last moment, you find you're in the wrong lane, don't cut across or bully other drivers to let you in. Follow the lane you're in and find somewhere safe to turn around and rejoin your route. Question 9. What does this sign mean? B. Maximum speed limit with traffic calming. If you're in a place where there are likely to be pedestrians, for example, outside a school, near a park, in a residential area or in a shopping area, you should be cautious and keep your speed down. Many local authorities have taken steps to slow traffic down by creating traffic calming measures such as road humps. They're there for a reason, slow down. Question 10. Which sign means no entry? D. Look for and obey traffic signs. Disobeying or not seeing a sign could be dangerous. It may also be an offense for which you could be prosecuted. Question 11. What does this sign mean? C. Level crossing with gate or barrier. Some crossings have gates but no attendant or signals. You should stop, look both ways, listen and make sure that no train is approaching. If there's a telephone, contact the signal operator to make sure it's safe to cross. Question 12. What does this sign mean? Traffic lights out of order. You might see this sign where traffic lights are out of order. Proceed with caution, as nobody has priority at the junction. Question 13. What does this line across the road at the entrance to a roundabout mean? A. Give way to traffic from the right. Slow down as you approach the roundabout and check for traffic from the right. If you need to stop and give way, stay behind the broken line until it's safe to emerge onto the roundabout. Question 14. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time? B. Be ready to stop. The longer traffic lights have been green, the sooner they'll change. Allow for this as you approach traffic lights that you know have been green for a while. They're likely to change soon, so you should be prepared to stop. Question 15. You're traveling behind a moped. What should you do if you want to turn left a short distance ahead? D. Stay behind until the moped has passed the junction. Passing the moped and turning into the junction could mean that you cut across the front of the rider. This might force them to slow down, stop or even lose control. Stay behind the moped until it has passed the junction, and then you can turn without affecting the rider. Question 16. What should you do if the red lights start flashing as you approach a level crossing? C. Stop before the barrier. At level crossings, the red lights flash before and while the barrier is down. At most crossings, an amber light will precede the red lights. You must stop behind the white line unless you've already crossed it when the amber light comes on. 
don't be tempted to zigzag around half barriers. Question 17. You're on a motorway. What should you do if there's a red cross showing on the signs above your lane only? B. Don't continue in that lane. A red cross above your lane shows that your lane is closed. You should move into another lane as soon as you can do so safely. Question 18. You're traveling on a road that has road humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? C. Slow down and stay behind. Be patient and stay behind the car in front. You shouldn't normally overtake other vehicles in areas subject to traffic calming. If you overtake here, you may easily exceed the speed limit, defeating the purpose of the traffic calming measures. Question 19. What should you do as you approach this overhead bridge? A. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. Oncoming large vehicles may need to move to the middle of the road to pass safely under the bridge. There won't be enough room for you to continue, so you should be ready to stop and wait. Question 20. You need to top up your battery with distilled water. What level should you fill it to? B. Just above the cell plates. Top up the battery with distilled water and make sure each cell plate is covered. Question 21. How should you drive in areas with traffic calming measures? A. At a reduced speed. Traffic calming measures such as road humps, chicanes and narrowings, are intended to slow drivers down to protect vulnerable road users. Don't speed up until you reach the end of the traffic calm zone. Question 22. Why should you slow down as you approach this hazard? because of the level crossing. You should be slowing down and selecting the correct gear in case you have to stop at the level crossing. Look for the signals and be prepared to stop if necessary. Question 23. What does it mean if you see this signal on the motorway? B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. You'll see this sign if there has been an incident ahead and the motorway is closed. You must obey the sign. Make sure that you prepare to leave in good time. Don't cause drivers to take avoiding action by cutting in at the last moment. Question 24. What does this sign mean? A. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Be prepared for traffic approaching from junctions on either side of you. Try to avoid unnecessary changing of lanes just before the junction. Question 25. Traffic officers operate on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales. What are they authorized to do? D. Stop and direct anyone on a motorway. 
traffic officers don't have enforcement powers but are able to stop and direct people on motorways and some A-class roads. They operate in England and Wales and work in partnership with the police at incidents, providing a highly trained and visible service. They're recognized by an orange and yellow jacket and their vehicle has yellow and black markings. Question 26. Who's legally responsible for ensuring that a vehicle registration certificate, V5C, is updated? B. The registered vehicle keeper. It's your legal responsibility to keep the details on your vehicle registration certificate, V5C, up to date. You should tell the licensing authority about any changes. These include your name, address or vehicle details. If you don't do this, you may have problems when you try to sell your vehicle. Question 27. What should you do when you are passing loose sheep on the road? B. Go very slowly. Slow down and be ready to stop if you see animals in the road ahead. Animals are easily frightened by noise and vehicles passing too close to them. Stop if you are signaled to do so by the person in charge. Question 28. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? D. Keep them warm and comfortable. There are a number of things you can do to help, even without expert training. Be aware of further danger from other traffic and fire, make sure the area is safe. People may be in shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Keep them warm and comfortable and reassure them. Don't move injured people unless there's a risk of further danger. Question 29. You arrive at an incident. A pedestrian is bleeding heavily from a leg wound. The leg isn't broken and there's nothing in the wound. How could you help? A. Apply firm pressure over the wound. You should protect yourself from exposure to blood and then apply firm pressure over the wound to stem the flow of blood. As soon as practical, fasten a pad to the wound with a bandage or length of cloth. Use the cleanest material available. Question 30. There are objects hanging from your interior mirror. Why could this be a hazard? C. Your view could be obstructed. Ensure that you can see clearly through the windscreen of your vehicle. Stickers or hanging objects could obstruct your view or draw your attention away from the road. Question 31. What will help you to move off on a snowy surface? B. Using a high gear than normal. If you attempt to move off in a low gear, there will be more torque, turning force, at the driven wheels, than if you use a high gear. More torque makes it easier for the tires to lose grip, and so spin the wheels. Question 32. You're driving in a built-up area that has traffic calming measures. What should you do when you approach a road hump? A. Check your mirror and slow down. Many towns have road humps as part of traffic calming measures, designed to slow down traffic. Reduce your speed when driving over them. If you go too fast, you could lose control or damage your car. Look out for pedestrians or cyclists while you're driving in these areas. Question 33. What should you do if a doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving?
SUV. Get someone else to drive. You shouldn't drive if you're taking medicine that could cause you to feel drowsy at the wheel. Ask someone else to drive or, if that isn't possible, find another way to get home. Question 34. You've stopped at a pelican crossing. What should you do if a disabled person is crossing slowly in front of you and the lights change to green? D. Wait for them to finish crossing. At a pelican crossing, the green light means you may proceed as long as the crossing is clear. If someone hasn't finished crossing, be patient and wait for them, whether they're disabled or not. Question 35. It's very windy. What should you do if you're behind a motorcyclist who's overtaking a high-sided vehicle? B. Keep well back. Windy weather affects motorcyclists more than other vehicles. In windy conditions, high-sided vehicles cause air turbulence. You should keep well back, as the motorcyclist could be blown off course. Question 36. You're driving on the motorway in windy conditions. What should you do as you overtake a high-sided vehicle? A. Be wary of a sudden gust. The draft caused by other vehicles, particularly those with high sides, could be strong enough to push you out of your lane. Be prepared for a sudden gust of wind as you overtake large vehicles. Keep both hands on the steering wheel to help you keep full control. Question 37. You want to park and you see this sign. What should you do on the days and times shown? B. Park in a bay and pay. Parking restrictions apply in a variety of places and situations. Make sure you know the rules and understand where and when restrictions apply. Controlled parking areas will be indicated by signs and road markings. Parking in the wrong place could cause an obstruction and danger to other traffic. It can also result in a fine. Question 38. How far are you allowed to reverse? B. No further than is necessary. You mustn't reverse further than is necessary. You may decide to turn your vehicle around by reversing into an opening or side road. When you reverse, always look all around you and watch for pedestrians. Don't reverse from a side road into a main road. Question 39. What would suggest you're driving on an icy road? C. There's less tire noise. Drive extremely carefully when the roads are icy. When traveling on ice, tires make virtually no noise, and the steering feels light and unresponsive. In icy conditions, be very gentle when braking, accelerating and steering. Question 40. You've been involved in an argument that's made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? A. Calm down. If you're feeling upset or angry, you'll find it much more difficult to concentrate on your driving. You should wait until you've calmed down before starting a journey. Question 41. What legal requirement must be met by a newly qualified driver? D. They must have valid motor insurance. 
it's your responsibility to make sure you're properly insured for the vehicle you are driving. This is the case regardless of whether you're a newly qualified driver or one with more experience. Question 42. Where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? A. In a garage. If you have a garage, use it. Your vehicle is less likely to be a victim of car crime if it's in a garage. Also, in winter, the windows will be kept free from ice and snow. Question 43. You service your own vehicle. How should you dispose of the old engine oil? C. Take it to a local authority site. It's illegal to pour engine oil down any drain. Oil is a pollutant and harmful to wildlife. Dispose of it safely at an authorized site. Question 44. What should you do before driving into a tunnel? D. Take off your sunglasses. If you're wearing sunglasses, you should remove them before driving into a tunnel. If you don't, your vision will be restricted, even in tunnels that appear to be well lit. Question 45. What should you do to avoid fuel spillage? B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. When learning to drive, it's a good idea to practice filling your car with fuel. Ask your instructor if you can use a petrol station and fill the fuel tank yourself. You need to know where the filler cap is on the car you're driving, so you know which side of the pump to park at. Take care not to overfill the tank and make sure you secure the filler cap correctly, so that no fuel leaks onto the road while you're driving. Question 46. On a vehicle, where would you find a catalytic converter? D. On the exhaust system. Although carbon dioxide is still produced, a catalytic converter fitted to the exhaust system reduces the toxic and polluting gases by up to 90%. Question 47. You're driving towards this left-hand bend. What danger should you be anticipating? C. Pedestrians walking towards you. Pedestrians walking on a road with no pavement should walk against the direction of the traffic. You can't see around this bend and if pedestrians are in the road you need to be able to deal with the situation safely. Always keep this in mind and give yourself time to react if a hazard does appear. Question 48. What safety device must be fitted to a trailer braking system? A. Breakaway cable. In the event that the trailer becomes detached from the towing vehicle, the breakaway cable activates the trailer brakes before snapping. This allows the towing vehicle to get free of the trailer and out of danger. Question 49. What must you do if poor health affects your driving? C. Inform the licensing authority. You must tell DVLA or DVA in Northern Ireland if your health is likely to affect your ability to drive. The licensing authority will investigate your situation and then make a decision on whether you're fit enough to drive safely. Question 50. 
How should a load be carried on your roof rack? C. Securely fastened with suitable restraints. Any load must be securely fastened to the vehicle. The safest way to carry items on the roof is in a specially designed roof box. This will help to keep your luggage secure and dry, and it also has less wind resistance than loads carried exposed on a roof rack. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in the first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time.